Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be looking at how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer could set up Manchester United next season, looking at starting 11s, formations, and tactics. Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you are new and turn notifications on and like that goddamn video. Anyway, let's get this party started. First up, let's talk formations. In modern football, you need to be super flexible with your system. Tweaking your formation in-game is an absolute must to counteract your opponents' strengths and weaknesses. How do they press? How do you play through? How are they sitting in their low block? And how can you open it up? Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has already played a number of different systems as United manager, and I imagine him to continue in that manner to make United unpredictable. The 4-3-3 looked good early on in Solskjaer's reign, getting the best out of Paul Pogba in a Metzala role, with a fluid front three of Lingard, Rashford and Martial. The diamond came next, using Lingard in attacking midfield to enable him to put pressure on the opponent its defensive midfielder and then allow split strikers to stay high up the pitch to counter in behind their opponent's fullbacks. We saw a fluid 4-4-2 in Paris that transitioned to a 3-4-1-2 in attack, utilising a number 10 and two centre forwards. Then a 3-5-2 versus Barcelona, allowing a man marker on Lionel Messi. I expect United to utilise all four systems plus more next season, but Let's use the 4-3-3 as a basic template and we can go into the fluidity between the systems later on. First up in goal, David De Gea, the Spanish goalkeeper, didn't have a vintage season last year, saving more goals than expected as he usually does, but he once again won United games. He made 11 saves for Manchester United versus Tottenham Hotspur in their 1-0 win in January. The most saves he's made in a top flight league game without conceding a goal. United's defence wasn't great last season and the stats showed it. David De Gea made the fourth most saves in the league, which is an indictment to how many shots United allowed. United have heavily worked on their build-up from the back under Solskjaer and need to continue reintegrating De Gea into that build-up after two and a half long seasons going long to Lukaku under Mourinho. United's possession play needs to be better and has to start with David De Gea. At fullback is where United now have real quality. Aaron Wambasaka joining Luke Shaw, Diogo Delo, and Ashley Young. At right back, Wambasaka and Diogo Delo will fight it out. Wambasaka offers an aggressive defensive option at fullback. The former Crystal Palace man won more tackles and made more interceptions than any other defender in the Premier League last season. Wambasaka has the ability to set the defensive tempo of his side with his tackling. United lacked players last season that made a high number of tackles in games and were far too cautious off the ball, often sitting in a 4 5 1 mid block with no pressure on the ball and that high line a recipe for disaster adding players that like a tackle will move united closer to Solskjaer's vision of an aggressive side wambasaka excels in 1v1 situations often showing his opponent down the line and then using his pace and wiry frame to win the ball with a slight tackle in the bigger games 4-4-2 with wambasaka at right back and delo ahead of him could be perfect. Wambazaka shone away from home last season against the top six sides, winning 23 out of 25 attempted tackles against the likes of Leroy Sane and Eden Hazard. On to Diogo Delo, the offensive weapon. Delo has the potential to be a complete wingback, comfortable in all aspects of the role. Delo should be used at fullback against teams that allow United the ball or have a defensive weakness on that left-hand side that Delo can exploit. In the modern game, fullbacks are wingers, creators, different makers in the final third. In terms of modern shapes, the most successful in recent years has been the MW, or a 2-3-3-2, which comprises of two centre-backs at the base, a three-man midfield, a false nine flanked by two wing-backs, and inside forwards ahead of them. This attacking setup mirrors Zinedine Zidane's Real Madrid or Klopp's Liverpool. United should adopt this in the 4-3-3 and the 4-4-2 diamond and evolve their three-man base from the 3-4-1-2 or a 3-5-2. The low would be massive in providing width and quality delivery from the right side. On to left back, Luke Shaw's improvement over the last 12 months earned him the Manchester United Player of the Year award. His overall game drastically improved his concentration levels, passing, energy levels, 1v1 defending, to name a few areas. His passing was the most obvious improvements. Too frequently in his United career would he play the easy pass that often put his teammates into trouble. Shaw has worked on his range and technique. He did the difficult job in Lingard's goal against Arsenal in the FA Cup, a 
driving run inside, followed by an outside the boot pass for Lukaku to run in behind and set up Lingard. Against Watford in the Premier League, his perfect through ball put Rashford in to score. 50% of Luke Shaw's career assists in all competitions have come under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and it's fantastic to see the improvements he's made since reclaiming the left back spot. At 23, the 2019-20 season is another pivotal year for Luke Shaw. But if we see another 12 months of improvement like previous, Shaw will be on the right path to become one of the best fullbacks in the Premier League. Centre-back is an area that United have had issues for years. Victor Lindelof has been the shining light over the past five seasons. The Iceman has adjusted to life in the Premier League really well and has the potential to be one of the best centre-backs in the league. Quick, strong, good on the cover, excellent at playing out from defence. One of his weaknesses in his game in his first season in the Premier League was aerially. The Swedish defender struggled with physical strikers or tall wide players moving in side. This can be seen in his win rate of aerial duels at 47%, but this has been corrected in his second season. Lindelof shows far more aggression in these situations, and you can see with his win rate shooting up to 63%. A trademark of a top-class player is their ability to improve their game season after season, and that's what Lindelof has done. His stand-up performance came against Juventus at home. The way he dealt with through balls that night was impressive, using his pace and positioning to cut passes out to Dybala and Ronaldo. In his second season in England, Lindelof registered 89% pass accuracy, won 80% of his tackles and made 2.9 clearances per game. But he needs a partner. Step forward, Harry Maguire. The England international has the mentality to play for Manchester United. He's taken to each new challenge in his career really well. Winning player of the year in his first senior season at Sheffield United. Then retaining that for the next two seasons with the Blades. Moving to Hull City and then winning the player of the year again in his first season in the Premier League. Then finally to Leicester. Again, Winning player of the year in his first year at the club. This screams an elite mentality and the ability to step up to a new level, which he's done consistently since moving up the football league. In terms of style, Maguire is a left-sided, right-footed, ball-playing centre-back. But don't let his frame deceive you. The England international is excellent on the ball when it comes to stepping out of defence, playing short passes into mid midfield, then receiving it back before moving the attack on or hitting a trademark long pass out to his attacking left back. Something that would encourage Luke Shaw to position himself higher up the pitch. Harry Maguire is the safe option, the Premier League proven option ahead of the likes of Koulibaly or Ibrahime Kanate. Harry Maguire could have the similar impact to Steve Bruce who signed for United at 27. Maguire, a year younger, could be the man to return United's defence to their former glories. His 2018-19 season compared to United centre-back shows what he could bring to the table. He completed more passes per game than a United centre-back, more long balls, more clearances and of course scored more goals, completed more dribbles and was only second to Chris Smalling in aerial duels one per game. Could be the complete guy for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Moving on to midfield, United need to invest given the departure of Matt Ryan Fellaini and Ander Herrera. Wolves' Ruben Neves would be the smart buy. Not only is he technically excellent, a rangy passer, extremely composed on the ball, but is solid defensively. But also he's capable of playing in multiple formations in multiple roles. We saw the 22-year-old seamlessly switch from playing in a 3-4-3 to a 3-5-2 last season, which suggests that he would be comfortable in playing in various shapes and setups that United could play next season. Neves' signature move this season has been receiving the ball deep from Bolly before looking for a quick switch out to the advanced right wing back Matt Doherty. And that kind of service would really help to bring the best out of Diogo Delo in an attacking sense. Neves would also help to implement a game plan in possession moving forward, whereas so far Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's played their best football on the counter. Perhaps Neves' reserved nature would afford United to play 2 3 8 in the right situations. Paul Pogba looked fantastic under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer last season. The midfielder was directly involved in 0.7 goals per game under the new boss. When deployed as a more advanced of a three-man midfield, Pogba was directly involved in a ridiculous 1.5 goals per game. The idea of bringing in Bruno Fernandes to dovetail with Paul Pogba in more advanced roles is absolutely frightening. Fernandes scored a record-breaking 20 goals in the league NOS last season. Even more impressively, the Portuguese talent averages 3.6 shots per game and 3.2 key passes, which suggests that these outrageous numbers are sustainable. On top of his offensive 
defensive numbers, Fernandez averages 2.9 tackles per game, showing that he's not afraid to get stuck in. With two attack-minded midfielders in Fernandez and Pogba, you have to think United wouldn't have much license to push their fullbacks forward. So that could see a change in the way they build up. United could build up in a 2-3-2-3 with Diogo Dalo and Luke Shaw operating as inverted wingbacks to give balance in central midfield, much like Pep Guardiola's teams. Dalo would be comfortable in this role, having played as an inverted fullback for Porto. Again, his tactical awareness would allow United to be so fluid in attack. This would allow United two of the best central attacking midfielders to combine with a striker and then look to create 1v1s out wide for the left and right winger before entering the penalty area. Pogba's best football of his career came for Juventus in a 3-5-2, which transitioned to a 3-2-4-1 in attack, with Dybala and Pogba combining supremely well in attacking midfield supported by marauding wingbacks. This would be a similar structure to United's in attack, using their fullbacks to create that platform to get forward. The 4-4-2 diamond is also an option, deploying McTominay as a right central midfielder, pushing Bruno Fernandes into attacking midfield. McTominay can be United's Darren Fletcher, a player to add great and determination into central midfield. McTominay won 90% of his tackles in the Premier League last season, the best rate of any midfielder to play over 600 minutes. And his standout performance came against Barcelona, winning 100% of his tackles and defensive aerial duels, completing 80% of his passes, making five ball recoveries, winning three fouls in the middle third and completing two out of his three dribbles. But Let's move on to the front three. Marcus Rashford is expected to be Oli's first choice centre forward for the new season. Rashford has excelled with the responsibility as Solskjaer's assassin. Playing as an advanced forward, pulling into the channels and being found by either the fullbacks or midfielders. From this position, Rashford can either play goal scorer or creator. Against Tottenham, he was the scorer scoring the decisive goal for Manchester United, who won the ball in central midfield, then Pogba found Rashford in behind the fullback. Rashford then produced a fine strike with his right foot across the keeper to win the game. With that goal, Rashford at just 21 has scored against all of the top six sides in the Premier League. Giving his time playing wide for the youth team and first team, Rashford is also comfortable in these areas on the dribble. And we've already seen some moments of brilliance in the channels, and against Bournemouth, he was the creator. His assist was almost most unfair. Young clipped the ball into the channel and Rashford exploded into life, picking up the ball on the right. He turned and faced up Ake, threw a step over in the process and knocked the ball past the former Chelsea man before flip-flapping Diogo Rincon and then finding Pogba with a low cross in the box. Rashford is a special player, capable of creating something out of nothing, but he can also cope with the pressure as seen by his penalty against PSG, his first of his senior United career. In such a big game, rifling the ball into the top left. The news of his new contract is excellent for United, tying down one of the best young players in Europe for the next four years. Kylian Mbappe and Luka Jovic were the only strikers under the age of 21 to score more goals in Europe's top five leagues last season than the Manchester United striker. Considering that he was used wide for Jose Mourinho, that is very, very impressive. On to the left wing, Martial could be Solskjaer's man. It's going to be a career-defining season for the Frenchman, who signed a bumper five-year deal in January. Martial was incredibly clear last season, scoring 10 league goals when his XG suggested that his quality of chances would more likely to see him score 7. Impressively, Martial scored 4 goals against the top 6. That's more than Sterling and Mohamed Salah managed, and the same as Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. However, Martial arguably has more to give outside the penalty area. His performance against Juve in November highlighted this. Martial was excellent on the ball. No player on the pitch completed more dribbles, and only Ronaldo and Dybala took more shots than Martial's 3. More impressively though, Martial worked very hard off the ball, with 23 of his 59 touches in the game coming in the opponent's half. That's the kind of work rate that I'm hoping to see from the 23-year-old going forward. Mason Greenwood, despite having just turned 17, will be more than capable of playing a rotation option on the left wing and at centre forward. He was directly involved in a frankly ridiculous 1.3 goals per game across all age groups for United last season. And he looked capable of stepping into the first team when he was handed his debut against Cardiff he took seven shots, more than any United player has managed in a single game last season. Finally, we have to discuss the right wing. Jadon Sancho is the dream signing. A supremely talented player, but Borussia Dortmund don't want to sell this summer. Don't worry though, Santan Dave is on it. 
Ole Gunnar Solskjaer utilised Diogo Delo as a right winger last season and we could see the former Porto man in an advanced position. As mentioned before, Diogo Delo is class in the final third and he has the ability to beat a man 1v1 with a dribble with his quick feet and trademark step overs. This would allow him to create a yard and then get crosses into the box. Combine that with the late runs from Bruno Fernandes and Pogba, it could be devastating in the final third. The other option could be Dani Almo. The Dynamo Zagreb attacking midfielder starred for Spain at the recent under-21 championship on the right wing. Almo came through the Barcelona Academy where he joined at 9 and left at 16 in search of first team football. Since then he's made 102 appearances for Dynamo Zagreb, averaging a goal or assist every other game. Last season he won the best player in the Croatian league and in 44 games in all competitions he was directly involved in 21 goals. He's comfortable in all four attacking positions but starred at the under 21 Euros on the right wing. Coming through at La Masia has given him that tactical edge. He's very good in attack and defence and in transition. Position. Spain's under-21 set up in a 4-3-3 using inverted fullbacks and wingers on the flanks. Armolo played as a winger, holding his width in the final third looking to get crosses into the box or making runs on the last line and looking for that cutback. Take his assist versus Poland, holding the depth and width for Spain. On the last man, Fenelas played a through ball, Olmo picked the pass and of course it was a goal. He's a player that passes from wide areas, not aimless crosses into the box, showing his awareness and composure. Composure seems to be a trait of any graduate from La Masia and Olmo not only can he do that when he creates but also when he scores. His quick reactions versus Germany after a Fabian Ruiz long shot was parried one Spain the competition applying a classy finish dinking the goalkeeper. On top of that awareness he also has the ability to beat a man in the dribble. There's an outrageous clip of him beating six men on a Maisie dribble using his close control on that classic Barcelona quick feet and the link for that will be in the description below. But statistically in all competitions last season for Spain and Dynamo Zagreb he averaged six dribbles per game completing 3.6 of them with a conversion rate of 60%. If United do make a few extra signings in the positions that we've highlighted, they'll be well on their way to returning to a side with great squad depth. With returning loan players and youth prospects that got minutes last season, you can make an entire Premier League eleven with high potential and hope these players get minutes, especially in those early cup competitions. But in terms of changes from the bench, Oli has several amazing options to give that first eleven a bit of a refreshing vibe. In goal, Dean Henderson has the potential to be a good backup for David De Gea. Whilst on loan at Sheffield United, he kept 21 clean sheets in the Championship more than any other goalkeeper. In defence, Axel Tuin. AB needs to get Premier League minutes in the United shirt and alongside Eric Bay could provide a good rotational option for four centre-backs but also allowing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to switch systems and play a back three as mentioned before McTominay could come in and change the system to a diamond Fred could join Scott and provide a great double pivot in central midfield as we saw in that famous night in Paris Juan Mata still has the ability to come off the bench and unlock a stubborn defence whilst Dan James's pace against tiring legs could win a lot of points this season whilst Jesse Lingard could provide competition to Dani Almo on the right or in the diamond as a number 10 with Bruno Fernandes. He's shown he's got big moments in him and could become Solskjaer's park to come into bigger games to provide extra energy and a winning goal like he's shown time and time again at Wembley or the Millie Rock Stadium or the Jess Lengard Arena slash the Emirates. Finally, the young players available in Greenwood, Gomez, Chong and Garner could get valuable minutes and provide a rest for senior players while showing the Old Trafford faithful how good they they are. But anyway, guys, how would you set up Manchester United next season and what signings do you want to see from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new, like that goddamn video and turn that notification bell on. Anyway, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?